Hi, welcome to Enrolling in Timetabling, a student's guide for the Engineering, Architecture and Information Technology faculty. Uh, to start, we will just do an acknowledgement of country. So the University of Queensland, UQ, acknowledges the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet. We pay our respects to their ancestors, their descendants, who continue cultural and spiritual connections to the country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. In this presentation, firstly, we'll look at some key information. We'll look at some enrolment dates, uh, understanding the difference between faculty and school, different modes of study, and understanding your electronic course profile. So important enrolment dates. Uh, Timetabling preferencing is now open and it will shut on the 3rd of July. So please make sure you do your timetable preferencing before then. On the 14th of July, it's the last date to request a program change through my sign it. It's also the domestic students due date to enrol. Orientation week or O week, as we like to call it, is the 17th to the 21st of July. And the 21st of July is also the international students due date to enrol. Uh, the 24th of July is when classes will commence. And the 4th of August is the last date for additional courses or alteration of enrolment. And it's the due date for payment of fees and charges. And then the 31st of August is the census date. Now, this is the last date to drop courses or cancel your enrolment without financial penalty. So faculties and schools. Uh, here at UQ, we have six faculties and we have around 32 schools. Uh, you might be asking, what's the difference between a school and a faculty? So the faculties uh, bring together teaching and research staff in school centres and institutes, and they provide study, research and partnership opportunities in Australia and the world. Within each faculty, you will then find a number of schools. Uh, we can see down the, the side there uh, the, some of the schools and we can probably pick out some of the ones for the engineering, architecture and information technology faculty. Uh, we can see chemical engineering, we can see civil engineering. Uh, so there's a range of different schools within the faculty. So while your faculty is the uh, engineering, architecture and IT faculty, uh, you will also uh, be part of a school. Okay. So here's some key terminology that we use here at UQ. So some of this it might be uh, not might be terminology that you have seen at other universities or other institutions, and some of this might be key words that we just use here at UQ. So to start off, we've got enrolment. So this is when you enrol in your courses for the semester. Okay, uh, then you will have your timetabling. So when you select and preference your class times for each of your courses. So then at UQ we have what we call a program. So this could be a bachelor or a master's or something different, and it is uh, what you might know as a degree. So we don't use the term degree here, we use the term program. Okay, and then in your program, you will have different courses. So the courses are the subjects that you study in your, in your program. So you'll have a number of courses that will make up your program. You might uh, also know this as subjects at different uh, institutions. Each course has a unit value. Most courses are two units uh, and the standard study load is eight units per semester. If you have maybe a placement uh, or an honours uh, course, uh, it might be a higher higher unit value, but most of them will be two units, okay? And then you'll have your course coordinator. So each course is designed and planned by a course coordinator. They'll often be the main lecturer of your course as well. You also will have an ECP or electronic course profile. So this is where you will find all the really important information about your course. It's really important that you are reading your ECP so that you know uh, all the different things that are going. you need to know about your course, uh, what's going on. So always check your ECP if you are not sure. Then you uh, might have some compulsory and elective courses. So the compulsory courses are the mandatory ones that you have to do. Uh, if you don't do your compulsory courses, you cannot complete your program. Uh, but then you might also have some electives. Uh, and these are ones, the additional ones that you can choose that will, can make up your program. Okay. You also might have a major and a minor. So a major combines courses in a program focusing on a specific discipline. Within that major, you probably have some compulsory ones. You might have some elective ones. And then a minor is similar, but there's just less courses in a minor. So a lecture. A lecture is a presentation delivered by an academic. 
This is where you're taught the theory of your course. Okay, then you'll have most likely some tutorials. So tutorials or cheats are held in a smaller classroom, involve more interaction between students and the tutor. You might also have, say, workshops or labs, depending on what you're studying. You will also have contact hours. So these are the number of hours per week of teaching activities for a course. So lectures, tutorials, workshops, those kinds of things. Uh, this information can be found on your ECP. So before we go any further, it is an important note for international students, okay? So a standard full-time study load is eight units, which is generally four courses per semester, okay? If you're an international student on a student visa, you have to complete your program at the end of your COE or your confirmation of enrolment, okay? You can't just reduce the number of courses without discussing it with anyone. Uh, if you do want to reduce the amount of courses that you undertake in a semester, we really recommend you talk to student services and also have a discussion with your faculty because it will have impacts on your CRE and your visa. So this is the grade structure that we have here at UQ. So we can see that a seven is a high distinction, a six is a distinction, a five is a credit, a four is a pass. Okay, as long as you get one of those marks, you will pass your course. If you get a three, it is a fail, but you potentially could apply for a supplementary assessment. Okay, this is an additional piece of assessment uh, to, to assess the, the skills that you might have missed. Uh, and if you pass a supplementary, then you will, can receive a four and pass the course. Uh, if you fail the supplementary, then it is still a fail. So a two is a fail. You are unable to get a supplementary for a two or a one. Okay. And then at that point, you need to decide if you are repeating the course, if it's a compulsory course, you'll have to repeat it. Uh, if it's a, if you don't have to do that course, then uh, if it's an elective, then you can potentially pick another one. Okay. And the tip there is that we don't mark on a curve. Okay. So you're achieving against yourself, not against your classmates. So course attendance mode. Okay, so your courses may be available in more than one delivery mode, depending on the program and the course requirements. First, we'll talk about in-person because most of the courses here at UQ are in-person. So you're required to engage in-person learning or assessment at a UQ campus or other location at some point. Uh, an in-person course might still have online things. So there might be online lectures or tutorials or assessment pieces as well. Uh, if you are external, uh, external courses are delivered entirely online and you participate in all the learning and assessment online. Please always make sure you check your ECP for information about attendance modes. So ECPs, we've talked about them multiple times already, uh, but what exactly are they? So your electronic course profile or your ECP uh, contains all the information for your course. So it will have the course objectives and aims. It'll tell you what the learning resources are you need are, so things like textbooks and specific software. It'll have the learning and teaching activities. It'll also have your assessment tasks, okay? So to view your ECP for the courses that you have enrolled in, you can log into MySignIt, uh, which can be accessed via the MyUQ dashboard. Uh, select the enrollments tile and click on the blue information icon beside the course code. And please note that some ECPs may not be available until the first weeks of class. Now, how can you access an ECP if you're not currently enrolled in the course? You might like to read a few ECPs uh, to kind of get a feel of what some different courses are before making your selection. So uh, you can access it by searching your course in the programs and course website. Uh, you can Google your course code, but if you are Googling, make sure you are selecting the right year and semester. So what does an ECP look like? So we can see there, this is the first search and is the front page of your ECP. So we can see that we've got some course information, aims and objectives. We've got some learning resources. Uh, we've got learning activities, we've got assessment and we've got policy guidelines and a learning summary. So in the general information, we can already see some of the information that we've already discussed. So we can see that there's uh, five contact hours per week. Uh, it's two units. Uh, we can see the level, we can see the mode. And then the, on the second half of the screen, we've got the learning resources. So this uh, course doesn't have any learning resources, but it's got a number of recommended ones. 
Uh, then we've got the teaching and learning activities. So we can see the course is broken down week to week of different, uh, different subjects uh, so that we know what we will be learning each week. And then we've got our assessment. Okay, so we've got an assessment summary. So we can see that this one's got an exam and a report. Uh, we've got some information on the course grading there as well. So uh, one tip that I give students when they are looking at their ECPs at the beginning of semester, you can you can see the dates that things are due. So read your ECPs, get the dates of things, uh, put it into your calendar so you know what is coming up and you're not taken by surprise. So the next section will be about enrolling. So we're going to talk about my sign it, uh, which we've already mentioned. We're going to talk about enrolling in your courses and how to get course advice and help. So to access my sign it, you can access it via uh, that website there. So signit.uq.edu.au or you can follow the link on the my UQ dashboard. Uh, it's probably a good idea for you to bookmark your dashboard so that you don't need to search around for it each time you need to access any of my sign it or your learning resources or your email. Uh, if you're unsure about uh, finding your dashboard, I often find that the easiest way to, to get it is to just scroll to the bottom of just about any UQ page uh, under current students and you, there is a link. So we're going to have a look at my sign it. So we can see there the little tile to go to my sign it. So we'll click on it. And this is what your front page of my sign it will most likely look like. So you can use my sign it to enroll in your courses and we can see the enrollment tile there, uh, update your personal details there. Now, if you are an international student or you are moving from interstate or intercountry to come to Brisbane, please update your personal details uh, as soon as you have them. Okay, it's really important that students have correct Australian phone numbers and Australian dress addresses. Uh, you can also pay your fees here. Okay, so we can see that this student owes $50. Uh, you can view your final grades. You can request a change of program. You can also get a program summary and you can defer your exams in here. You can also apply for a supplementary as well. So because this is about enrolling, let's click on the enrollment tile. So if you click on the enrollment tile, it will take you to here. So uh, we can see that there's they're doing a Bachelor of Psychological Science honours, but there's no enrolments yet. So we click add a course and then uh, we can search via course. Now, if you know what course code you need to enrol in, you can put that in, find it straight away. If you kind of know the subject area you would like to do a course in and you uh, are able to make changes to which courses that you are doing, then you can search via area. Uh, and then you find one that you think is appropriate, that is appropriate, that meets your program requirements, uh, and you can enroll in it, okay? It'll pop up a uh, little information about what it is, and we can click enroll. So if you are unsure about which courses you should be enrolling in, or you have questions about your program, I, it is best that you reach out to an academic advisor at your faculty, okay? So we can see there that the Faculty of Engineering, Architecture and Information Technology is inquiries at eait.uq.edu.au. Now, uh, an academic advisor at your faculty is also school-based. So there will be a different academic advisor based on uh, which school you are in. Okay, so that is uh, enrolment. So we will now go on to timetabling. So we will look at the class allocation process. We'll look at important dates. We'll look at how do you choose your classes and what does this look like? We'll look at preferencing and making changes to your timetable and where to go for timetable advice and help. So preferences opened on the 19th of June and they will stay open until the 3rd of July. This section, it doesn't matter what time in that section, that time frame that you put your allocations in as long as you do it in that time frame. Okay, it's this section is not a first in first served. It's everyone puts in their uh, preferences and then timetables are generated based on everyone's preferences. Okay, uh, once that is shut, there will be, uh, it'll be shut for a while. You won't be able to make any changes. Then it will open again for the adjustment and swap periods. This, it, this time it is important to get in early, okay? 
if you get in late, uh, you might miss out on potential changes if you do want to make changes. And this adjustment period will then shut again on the 7th of August. So choosing class times. So you've hopefully enrolled in your courses already, uh, but you need to select your preferred class times. Your classes will be allocated based on the preferences that you select, and this is called class preferencing. So to select your preferred class times, you'll need to register your preferred times through my timetable, which is the class allocation system, which can be accessed through the My UQ dashboard. So once again, we can see our dashboard there and we can see uh, the My Timetable link. So now we're just going to wa watch a quick uh, video on how to preference your timetable. This video will help you preference your classes using My Timetable. Through the My UQ portal, you can access the My Timetable application on the left-hand side toolbar. On the left of screen, you can view the courses in which you are enrolled. Any class marked with a red symbol requires your attention. When you are notified with a yellow symbol, your preferences for this class are pending. When you are notified with a green symbol, this class has been allocated and requires no further attention. Select a class to enter your preferences. View all available class times displayed in either list or timetable format by switching between the views on the top right hand corner. Next to the preference drop down menu, a percentage will indicate the popularity of the class. To preference a class, you can use a drop-down menu to nominate your preference. Where there are four or more options, you will be required to select a minimum of four preferences. Where there are a large number of options, you can choose a maximum of ten preferences. Then select Save. Here, you will be successfully notified of your progress. Now that we have input our preferences into each class, Yellow symbols indicate our preferences are saved and pending allocation. When the class preferencing window has closed, my timetable will be unavailable for a few days. During this time, the system will create your personalised timetable based on your preferences. So that's how you preference your timetable. Then uh, after the 10th of July, you can then make changes to your timetable. So this is when you would review your allocated timetable. Uh, if there's spaces, you can swap. If there's a preferred time that is full, you can wait list, which is why it's important to do it straight away as soon as it's open to you. Uh, and you can allocate yourself to classes you missed during the preferencing stage. So if you uh, had a late enrolment in a course, uh, then you can then uh, add this one to your timetable. So make sure you, you, re you review your timetable as soon as you can, because the earlier you swap a wait list, the better chance you have of getting the timetable you want. You now have your personalised timetable that can be accessed through the MyUQ portal via the timetable application on the left-hand side toolbar. If your situation changes and your timetable no longer suits, you can make changes during the class adjustment stage. On the left of the screen, you can view the courses in which you are enrolled. If there is a green symbol, your classes have been allocated. After the allocation process is complete and where places are available, you are able to change your allocation by clicking the Select button next to your preferred class. If a class is full, you can request a swap by clicking the heart icon. You will then become waitlisted and allocated if a place becomes available. If you change your mind, you can deselect the swap request by clicking the heart icon. If you see a clash, you will not be able to allocate to this class.
So if you would like to watch these videos again or watch an additional video on using the timetable planner, if you're not quite sure how to best do your timetable, you can uh, watch these videos again by looking for enrollment and class allocation videos. Uh, also, if you've watched these videos again and use the planner and you're still struggling with your timetable, you can contact your faculty for timetable help. So there we can see the, the email to to email if you are having timetable issues. So eait.mytimetable at uq.edu.au. So if you are struggling with your timetable uh, and you've watched the videos again, please reach out to the team. Uh, if you'd like to provide us some feedback about this presentation, uh, you can do so by selecting uh, this QR code and, and leaving us some uh, feedback. We always appreciate feedback on our presentations so we can constantly improve them. Okay, so we're now we're going to look at some important reminders and some things to be aware of. So we're going to look at the academic integrity modules and English for academic communication. So... It's very important that all students complete the academic integrity modules. So these modules are designed to help you understand your obligations and responsibilities as a UQ student. Academic integrity describes the ethical principles that underpin academia and student life. So they've got two due dates. So you need to have completed part A by the 31st of August and part B by the 27th of October. And you can access these modules uh, on the edX Edge platform. Click enroll now to get started. The modules are intended to be completed only once. If you are having technical issues accessing those modules, you can contact the library. So the UQ library ask us uh, either at the help desk or on their website. If this is the first time you are studying in English, uh, it might be a good idea to enroll in the English for Academic Communication course. So this is, these courses were set up to support international students uh, and students with English as an additional language to participate fully in UQ. Okay, so they are free. They're interactive workshops with, which give you the opportunity to practice language and receive feedback. And they will help you communicate if clearly and effectively in an academic context. So if you are worried about your English for uh, academic communication, I highly recommend you enroll in these courses. Uh, they will be very useful. Uh, so that comes to the end of our presentation. Uh, thank you for sitting here and watching with me. Uh, best of luck with your time at UQ.